If we want people to go electric, we need electric vehicles that will travel further per charge. But current battery technologies are only taking us so far. In this video, we'll look at a new battery development that just powered a Tesla Model S for over 750 miles, or nearly 200% of the original range. Whilst this is impressive, I think its successor is going to be the real game changer. But no one seems to be talking about it. Let's analyse how these systems work and whether they really make sense in practice. This Tesla Model S has recently been making the rounds in the media as it drove a groundbreaking 752 miles on a single charge. The Tesla was powered by the new experimental Gemini 001 battery, built by R Next Energy or One. Put simply, to achieve the 750 mile range, they had to roughly double the capacity from around 100 to 200 kilowatt hours, whilst keeping the battery pack the same physical size and volume. This means they couldn't just cram batteries into random places. So how have they managed to fit so much extra energy storage into the same volume? I believe this primarily comes down to the battery cooling system. Typically, Tesla's battery packs have a lot of cooling pipes, and these take up a lot of space. So one has thrown them away and used the free space to fit in as many battery cells as possible. But doesn't that mean it will now overheat? Potentially yes, but probably no. To slightly simplify things, we can say that if you double the number of cells in the pack, each cell is working half as hard. Because of this, each cell produces only a quarter as much waste heat as the current is halved and heating is current squared. Therefore, a much smaller cooling system is required to prevent the whole pack from getting too hot, such as these heat sinks seen here. Two primary reasons that mainstream automotive manufacturers don't do this is because the vehicle will likely cost and weigh too much. The Gemini 001 cooling system may also struggle with the high power demands of aggressive driving or during fast charging, but this is currently unclear. So perhaps this first Gemini could be useful in high-end luxury EVs, but it won't be increasing the range for the average driver, and it may not work in hypercars either. For a real shift in battery technology, we might need to look into the tech behind the future Gemini battery. Whilst the Gemini 001 only uses high-energy cobalt-nickel cells, the future Gemini battery pack will use two different types. See, when picking a cell for a battery pack, you have a trade-off between high power output and high energy storage. Also, some batteries can last for many, many cycles, whilst others, especially new high energy storage cells, age much faster. So why not have the best of both? Well, that's the plan for the Gemini battery. One's plan is to take the battery pack and split it into two sections, one for high power cells and one for high energy cells. The high power cells will use lithium iron phosphate, whilst the high energy cells will use a graphite free anode and a highly energy dense cathode, which won't rely on unethical cobalt. According to one, they have developed this high energy cell, but evidence and details are yet to be released. My hypothesis is that these new cells will have a very high energy storage capabilities, but will also wear out very quickly. Therefore, the high energy cells will only be used in the rare cases you need to travel a long distance, or to slowly recharge the power pack if it's running low. By only ever discharging the energy cells slowly and gradually, it will also extend their life, which is good because, as we know, they wear out faster. This is backed up in this graph by one, showing that most journeys are under 80 miles and that any under 150 miles could solely use the LFP pack. Though this also shows we may not need as much range as people think, but that's a topic for another video. So far, we have only looked at the multiple chemistry design of the future Gemini battery pack, but will it use any of the cooling system tricks we saw in the Gemini 001? Because the power pack will be smaller, the cells will be working hard and will likely need a normal cooling circuit like we see in the current Tesla packs, for example. However, the high energy cells are unlikely to be under much power demand, which means they'll produce less waste heat. Therefore, these cells can also be packed in tightly, similar to the Gemini 001. One has a lot to prove here, and who knows how their battery pack design and cells will actually perform. However, I truly think that packs that have multiple cell chemistries in them are gonna change how battery systems are designed. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and comment below if you think that this battery breakthrough will carry on into future vehicles.